The sun is up, the sky is blue. Today is beautiful and so are you. A pleasant day to everyone, especially to our research advisor, Dr. Silvia Pangilinan, our research instructor, Dr. Roberto Sambilio, and to our panel. I am Tisha Cabral, and together with my research group mates, I'm Renzel Hope Banyes. I'm Milder Trufilapi Banzon. I am Camille Barcelona. I'm Jarela Bautista. I'm Justin Befetel. I'm Kian Julia Berlangen. I'm Trisha Bossi. I am Candice Marie Boyd. I'm Ferdinand and Dairo. And we are here to present to you our study entitled COVID-19 Diagnosis, Stigmine Coping Mechanism Among Students. So for a brief background, COVID-19 is a global crisis. The infection spreads unstoppably and the deaths mount. It shows us that despite our wealth and power, we cannot end COVID's pain, agony, and loss that came with it. It occurs in numerous nations, states, provinces, including Bataan. With that being said, there are students from all over the province and outside who are currently enrolled at the Bataan Peninsula State University main campus who have been diagnosed with COVID-19 and have faced challenges through the stigmatization along with the way in which they have prevailed over COVID-19 with the help of the coping mechanisms that they applied. To explore more about the relationship of stigma and coping mechanism among students, the following questions were addressed. So first we have, what is the demographic profile of the college students of BPSU in terms of, we have age, sex, and year level. For the second question, how can the experience of stigma among the respondents be described in terms of social stigma and self-stigma? Self-stigma refers to the negative attitudes, including internalized shame, that people with mental illness have about with their own condition. Social stigma denotes the negative association between a person or group of people who share certain characteristics and a specific disease. So for the third question, we have how may the utilized coping mechanism be described by the respondents in terms of, first, we have problem-focused co problem coping, emotion-focused coping, and avoidant-focused coping. So for problem-focused coping, it indicates all the active efforts to manage stressful situations and alter a troubled person environment relationship to modify or eliminate the source of uh, stress via individual behavior. Emotion-focused coping um, involves regulating your feelings and emotion response to the problem instead of addressing the problem. And lastly, avoidant coping examines the maladaptive form of coping in which a person changes their behavior to avoid thinking about, feeling, or doing difficult things. And for our last and fourth question, what is the relationship between the stigma-related variables and coping mechanism-related variables of the respondents? For the scope and delimitation, so descriptive research method and correlational analysis will be used to determine the association of COVID-19 diagnosis stigma and coping mechanism among students. For the scope, the respondents will be the enrolled undergraduate students in Bataan Peninsula State University main campus for the academic year 2021 to 2022, regardless of their age, sex, and year level, and was diagnosed with COVID-19. So our study limits itself to the students enrolled in other BPSU campuses and in the academic year 2021 to 2022 and diagnose COVID-19 students and any problems regarding to COVID-19 unrelated to stigma and coping mechanisms. So for, I, for the hypothesis, we provided a null hypothesis which states that there is no significant relationship between the stigma experienced by BPSU students with COVID-19 and their coping response. So the figure here is our conceptual framework, which is in the IVDB format. Our independent variables are the demographic profile, which are the age, 
sex and year level and the stigma related factors which are the so self and social stigma for the dependent variable we have the coping mechanism related factors which are the problem focused coping emotion focused coping and avoidant coping Next, under the research methodology, the research design, the researchers used a descriptive research design, a type of research design that aims to gather in order to describe a phenomenon, situation, or population in a systematic way. It primarily assists in answering the what, when, where, and how questions about the research problem rather than the why. In this method of research, uh, the researcher does not control or manipulate any variables. Instead, the variables are only determined, observed, and measured. Next, for the sampling method, the researchers used purposive sampling in this study, a non-probability sampling method were in the, for the sample population. The researcher chooses variables at their discretion. The entire sampling process is based on the researcher's judgment and understanding of the situation in this case. Moreover, the students who had COVID-19 infection are the chosen respondents of the study. Using the G-Power software to determine the sample size, the study came up with 100 samples. The researchers set inclusion criteria of the respondents. First, uh, the respondent must be an undergraduate student of Pipesho main campus, regardless of age, sex, and year level. Second, must be enrolled during academic year 2021 to 2022. And third, must have been diagnosed with COVID-19. For the data gathering procedure, since the researchers were not able to conduct a face-to-face -face interaction with the respondents, for the safety of both researchers and respondents during the ongoing pandemic, the researchers used an online set of questions using JotForbes, a type of survey software, to gather data from students of BPSU main campus who were able to meet the inclusion criteria. The data collection method was further divided into two phases, the social preparation and it uh, the actual data gathering. In social preparation, the researchers communicated with non-random students uh, currently enrolled at BPSU main campus through their school email addresses and Facebook Messenger after the study has passed the edit, uh, ethical evaluation and approved questionnaires. The link to the job form contained a brief description of the study, the inclusion criteria, and an informed consent about uh, the data collection and confidentiality to ensure that the information collected will be kept with utmost importance and privacy. Students who met the research criteria were considered qualified to participate uh, to participate in the study. In the second phase, the actual data gathering, the survey was explained to the respondents thoroughly the main purpose and details of the responses for clarifications and to avoid any misunderstandings. When the targeted uh, respondents agreed, the researchers asked them to sign the consent forms through chat forms. The set of research questions approximately took the respondents 20 minutes or less to answer. Next, for the research instrument, two standardized tools and a brief demographic questionnaire were utilized to gather participant information for the study after a comprehensive literature assessment. The tools utilized in data, uh, gathering the data required in the study were lifted from the COVID-19 infection stigma scale and brief code. COVID-19 Infection Stigma Scale is a self-report quantitative instrument that assesses the stigma associated with COVID-19 infection. It has questions on feelings like dread, guilt, and grief in dealing with the sickness, attitude, and self-feeling about the infection and worry and uh, fear of others' reactions. The items were rated on a four-point Likert scale as follows, one for never, two for rarely, three for usually, and four for always. Uh, according to Egohari et al. 2021, the brief code measures uh, coping or cognitive regulation methods across 28 dimensions in reaction to stress. Moreover, the brief code was created as a condensed version of the original 60 item uh, cope scale. It provides scores on problem focused coping, emotion focused coping, and avoidant coping. Additionally, destruction, denial, substance abuse, withdrawal from social activities, and religion are described as coping characteristics. Using a four-point Likert scale, respondents track their use of a particular coping style. The researchers use this measure to question participants about their stigma and coping strategies related to their uh, COVID-19 diagnosis, according to Carver et al. 1989. So the first section of the instrument contains the demographic profile of the respondents, which includes their age, sex, and year level. This section was utilized as a powerful instrument to aid in data analysis and interpretation. 
The second part was to assess and measure individuals' COVID-19 related stigma. The COVID-19 infection stigma scale can help promote operational research and the development of COVID-19 related stigma reduction interventions. The researchers used the COVID-19 infection stigma scale as the four-point Likert scale allowed for a variety of responses and includes both the internal part of stigmatization, which represents self-stigma, and the outward aspects. Um, which occurs in the treatment of others, which is the social stigma, according to Igor Harry et al. 2021. And the third part measures fundamentally distinct coping strategies, the problem-focused coping, emotion-focused coping, and the avoidant coping. The brief questionnaire assess coping methods, uh, according to Carver et al. 1989. And lastly, for the validation of research instruments, the, cost, uh, the contents of the questionnaire were validated by three professionals with experience in nursing and research. Uh, the validators gave their professional judgment about the content of the scale, addition, evaluation of the structure of the questionnaire, understanding of the items, analysis of the format and presentation of the questionnaire, and the analysis of the following questions. In validation of the instrument, the scale was subjected to reliability and validity analysis with a sample of 20 COVID diagnosis, uh, diagnosed students from BPSU who became a part of the pilot study and utilized the instrument that Obtain a Cronbach's alpha score of 0 0.797 for 25 items. The main objective is to check whether the 25 item scale can be summarized in a way that shows the relationship between COVID-19 diagnosis stigma and coping me mechanisms. Now let's proceed to the presentation of the findings. Starting off with the demographic profile, which is age. So as displayed of the respondents are within the age range of 21 years old, a population group with a total of 43 out of 100, having 43% of the total population and the lowest age range of 16 and 31 years old, which would be making up 1.0%. Then with sex, based on the results shown, the majority of the respondents were female with 54, or 54% as compared to male who are only 46 or 46% of the total population. As to their year level, 58 out of 100 or 58% of the respondents are in their third year. Following along with the first year being 16%, second year being 14%, and then fourth year being only 12%. So for the table number four, the experience of self-stigma of the respondents who had COVID-19. Out of the five statements given, three of them were interpreted rarely and the remaining was interpreted as usually. Among the items evaluated, the second statement with the highest mean of 2.85 determines that the respondents typically grow frustrated due to their infection, followed by the first statement that got the mean of 2.52 which determines that the respondents usually felt shy because of their infection. Then the third statement that got the mean of 2.28 determines that the respondents rarely fe felt that they were an unwanted person, um, followed by the fourth statement that got the mean of 2.26, which determines that the respondent, respondents rarely felt that they were inferior to others. And lastly, the fifth statement got um, the mean of 1.97. The term means that the respondents rarely felt that they were being punished from the sin that they committed. So for the table five, which is the experience of social stigma of the respondents who had COVID-19. As shown in table five, all statements were interpreted as the highest mean of 2.26 meaning the respondents rarely hid the news about the infection. The fifth statement has the lowest mean of 1.94, specifies that the respondents rarely fear that their family will stay away even after recovering from the infection. Although the results showed that it is rare, there is still a stigma related to the infection. As revealed, the social stigma among respondents who had COVID-19 has composite mean of 2.14, which is interpreted as rarely. Hence, the result shows that the respondents who had COVID-19 rarely experienced social stigma. For the table six, 
problem focused coping mechanism of the respondents. For the problem focused coping of the respondents, it got the highest composite mean amongst all parameters, gaining 3.29 in a medium amount in description. All statements that were rated by the respondents got a medium amount mark and only a few points distinguishing their means. The remark that got the highest mean of 3.42 specifies that the respondents tried to come up with a strategy about what to do to cope with their situation and comparing to the remark that got the lowest mean of 3.11 specified that the respondents problem focused coping was to get help and advice from other people. With regards to the emotion focused coping of the respondents, the fourth statement accepting the reality of the fact that it has happened has the highest mean of 3.53, described as I've been doing this a lot. It was followed by the fifth statement with a mean of 3.36, uh, the first statement with a uh, mean of 3.19, uh, the second statement with the mean of 2.73, all described as uh, uh, with a medium amount. And the third statement has the lowest mean of 2.14, described as a little bit. Emotion-focused scoping is the second parameter that has the highest composite mean of 2.99, which means that the respondents have been utilizing uh, emotion-focused scoping with COVID-19 diagnosis stigma in a medium amount. For, for our table number eight, um, the statement that gained the highest mean of 3.11 states that the respondents were doing something to think about the infection less, such as going to movies, watching TV, reading, daydreaming, sleeping, or shopping, which has been interpreted as a medium amount. On the other hand, the lowest mean acquired was 1.52 for the statement that specifies that the respondents were using alcohol or other drugs to help them get through with it, which was interpreted as a little bit. As gathered from the table number eight, the avoided coping of the respondents has a composite mean of 2.25, which was overall interpreted as a little bit. Therefore, the result shows that the respondents of the study practice a little bit amount of avoidant coping mechanisms related to their COVID-19 infection. Table number nine, probability value and decision on the significant relationship between the stigma-related variables and coping mechanism variables. Uh, based on table number nine, this shows that there is a significant relationship between the stigma-related variables and coping mechanism variables. Since the p-value of 0 0.002 is less than the level of significance of 0 0.05. Thus, rejecting the null hypothesis, uh, it is shown that the p-value in table 9 is lower than the level of significance of 0 0.05. It means that there is a statistical significance between the variables. Uh, the table also shows that there is a mod moderate relationship uh, between the two variables since the value of our ratio is 3 0.307. Uh, as such, in Table 9, it shows that there is a relationship and significance between the sigma-related variables and coping mechanism variables. For the summary of findings, the respondents were 100 BPSU main campus COVID-19 diagnosed students. The majority of the respondents were female with 54 respondents. Most of them were also at the age of 21 years old with 43 respondents and on their third year level with 50 eight respondents out of the total of 100 total number of respondents. The areas assessed in the stigma experience were rarely consummated as represented by the 2.38 composite mean of self-stigma and 2.14 composite mean for the social stigma. In terms of coping mechanism, problem-focused and emotion-focused co coping were done in a medium amount while avoidant coping was somewhat executed by the respondents. Problem-focused coping were represented by the composite mean of 3.29 and the emotion-focused coping were, were represented by the composite mean of 2.99 and the avoidant coping with 2.25.
As a conclusion, there is a significant relationship between the stigma-related variables and the coping, coping mechanism variables with a p-value of 0.002, lesser than the 0.05 level of significance. The Spearman row value of 0.307 indicates that the two variables have a moderate positive relationship. So next is the conclusion. So first, the respondents of the study were composed of undergraduate students of Bataan Peninsula State University main campus. So the students tested positive for COVID-19 regardless or in terms of their year level, age, and sex. Next is the findings reveal that the students who tested positive for COVID-19 rarely experienced self and social stigma. Third, the result of the coping mechanisms among the respondents indicated what they, ge they generally do and feel during their COVID experience. The problem-focused and emotion-focused coping were utilized in a medium amount, while the avoidant coping were interpreted as utilized a little bit. Higher scores indicate increased utilization of the specific coping strategy. And lastly, the result of the conducted data gathering implies that there is a significant relationship between COVID-19 diagnosis stigma and coping mechanisms among the students of Bataan Peninsula main campus, thus indicating that the null hypothesis presented should be rejected as the findings justifies moderate relationship between the two variables. Based on the findings in the study, the researchers have come up with the following recommendations. The researchers recommend that the institution recognize the stigma of the diagnosed students and provide policies in line within the limitations during the difficult times. This is to give students easier academic experience and just treatment without pushing down and triggering stress. Um, this recommendation is also solely for the purpose of giving the diagnosed students a chance to slow down as they are still recovering and to not protrude within the limits of their mental health. Second is the researchers would also like to recommend a health awareness campaign that features the stress and coping techniques to those with COVID-19. Those who are still recovering from COVID-19 and those who recovered from the virus but are still under the stress of the virus. Lastly is the researchers recommend a peer support group or advisors that are open for stress students. Again, that is all for our study COVID-19 diagnosis stigma and coping mechanism among Bataan Peninsula State University students. Thank you very much for listening and have a good day.